Hi, I have an example here of the gradient of scalar fields. And this example is part A, B, and C. Each part uses a different coordinate system. So let's get started with part A, which I'll write up here. So we inspect A, u equals x squared y plus x, y, z. And we notice that this uh, scalar field has x, as a variable, y as a variable, and z as a variable. And so we know that we are in Cartesian coordinates. So we're trying to find the gradient of u in Cartesian coordinates. So uh, we, we recall that the gradient of u is this del operator times u, like that, del u. And that's defined as the partial derivative of u with respect to x times the unit vector in the x-direction plus the partial derivative of u with respect to y times the unit vector in the y-direction plus the partial derivative of u with respect to z times the unit vector in the z-direction. So all I have to do is find those partial derivatives and then essentially the problem is solved. So let's talk about the partial derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, so I look at u, and the key point here is that since we're, we're taking the partial derivative with respect to x, y and z, for all intents and purposes, are constants, considered constants, in the, in the viewpoint of x. So when, when I have x squared, plus, or x squared times y, we view that y as a constant, as we would any other constant. And we take the derivative of that, the 2 comes down in front, of course, and we get 2xy, and then I look at the next term, and again, the yz is like a constant, and so the derivative of that thing with respect to x is just yz, right? And then we repeat this, but we take the partial derivative with respect to y. So now y is the variable, and everything else is a constant, including the x's. So the first term there, x squared, is a constant times y, so the derivative with respect to y is just x squared. And then we look at the second term, and again, uh, those constants there, x, z. Okay, and then finally, take the partial derivative, derivative, excuse me, with respect to z, so everything is a constant other than z, and here there are no z's, so the derivative of a constant is zero, and then the, the uh, derivative over here is just x, y. So this is what we've got. And so I combine all those things um, using the definition of the del operator, or the gradient of u. And so I get that the gradient of u equals, and I'm just going to write it all out, um, I've got 2xy plus yz in the x direction plus x squared plus xz in the y direction plus xy in the z direction. And that's the answer for part A. All right, if I went through that too quickly, feel free to pause the video, but I'm going to move on now to part B. And we have v equals rho squared times z times cosine of 2z, uh, two, excuse me, 2 phi, 2 phi. Okay, so we inspect that and we see that the variables rho, phi, and z. So we know we are in cylindrical coordinates this time. And so we consult our notes or, you know, um, we look in the textbook, what have you. And we know that the, 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 the gradient is equal to this guy. So we're going to take the partial derivative of v with respect to rho times a unit vector in the rho direction plus, and then there's this one over rho times the partial derivative with respect to phi times the unit vector uh, in the phi direction plus the partial derivative of v with respect to z times a unit vector in the z direction. So the key here is this one over rho. Everything else is as you would expect it to be um, you know, relative to part A, but that one over rho, and we talked about in in previous videos why or where that one over rho comes from. Okay, so I'm not going to explain that here. We're just going to do the computation here because this is an example video. Okay, so let's talk about those partial derivatives. So I'm going to take the partial derivative of v with respect to rho. So 
This is with respect to rho. Z and phi are considered constants. So the only thing here that I need to be worried about is the rho squared. So when I, when I take that derivative, I get 2 rho, and then we tack on the constants. So this is 2 rho z cosine of 2 phi, like that. Okay, and so I'll repeat this, but we'll take the partial derivative of v with respect to phi this time. So now, phi is the variable, and rho and z are both co constants. So uh, I've got this phi that, that comes along with the 2 and inside the cosine. So the derivative of, if we forget about these constants for a second, the derivative of cosine of 2 phi would be negative sine of 2 phi, and then from the chain rule, times 2. So we pick up a negative, we pick up a 2, and then the cosine changes to sine. So then, we, And then we tack on all the constants, and we get negative 2 rho squared z sine of 2 phi, like that. I think I've done that correctly, and then I move on. So now we're going to go to the partial derivative of v with respect to z. So now again, rho and phi are the constants here, and z is the only thing that's not a constant. Well, I've got just z to the first power, so um, the derivative of that is pretty straightforward. If you if you if you're um, you know if you subscribe to this idea that everything else is constant, then we just we just have this uh, rho squared cosine of two phi. Okay, so now we uh, combine all those things, and we you know we we look to the definition of the gradient in the cylindrical coordinates, and we see that the, the gradient of v here, so I take dv d rho, which I've got, 2 rho z cosine of 2 phi in the rho direction, plus 1 over rho times dv d phi. Okay, so one of those rows cancels, and so what I, I really have a, a minus then, let me write a minus, 2 rho z sine of 2 phi times a unit vector in the phi direction, right? Okay, again, one of those rows canceled from the thing circled in orange there, and then I've got dv dz, so I've got that here, so plus rho squared cosine of 2 phi az, or a unit vector in the z direction, and that's the answer to part b. Okay, so finally we're going to move on to part C, and I'll, I'll write that over here. We've got W equals 10 times R times sine squared of theta times cosine of phi. So we see variables R, theta, and phi here, so we know we are in spherical coordinates this time around. Imagine that. Okay, so now we have the gradient of W, so I consult my notes or I consult the textbook. And uh, this is again written as del W. And this is defined as, in spherical coordinates, uh, the partial derivative of w with respect to r times a unit vector in the r direction plus 1 over r times uh, the partial derivative of w with respect to theta, okay, times a unit vector in the theta direction plus 1 over r sine theta times the partial derivative of w with respect to phi times the unit vector in the phi direction. Okay, so the things that we need to be concerned with here, you know, the, the ar is, uh, the ar term is exactly what you'd expect, and then the a theta term, we have this guy that we need to be concerned with, and then in the phi term, we have this guy that we need to be concerned with. And again, we, we kind of covered that in the in the lecture videos of, of why uh, those things are the way they are. Uh, but in this video, we're just going to compute this gradient, and we're not going to discuss that again, why, why those things are there. We're just going to take that as fact. All right, so let's get those partial derivatives. So dw versus dr. So I look, again, I look at w, and r is the variable theta and phi are constants, so I can just, I just have r to the first power, so when I take a, something to the first power, or the derivative, then I just get th those constants. So that's not bad at all. It's very nice, actually. So now I look at the second one, dw versus d theta, right? So I've got this theta in the, um, 
you know, with the sine squared. So um, we're going to need a chain rule here, and um, the outside function is the is the squaring. So the two would come down in front, and we would subtract one from the exponent. So that'd make a twenty, and then we'd multiply by the, the derivative of the inside. The inside function is sine of theta, so the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So putting all that together, and I'll trust that you know the chain rule very well. At this point you should. 20r sine theta, right, so that's the that's the derivative of the outside, so to speak, and then the derivative of the inside is the cosine of theta, and then we have cosine phi, which is a constant. Okay, and moving on, we've got dw versus d phi. And so again, the, the theta and the r are constants here, and the only phi I have is in the cosine, and the derivative of cosine of phi is minus sine of phi. So I'm going to pick up a minus here. This is minus 10r sine squared theta sine phi. Those are my partial derivatives. And then finally, and I'll write it out, then according to this formula, the gradient of w is then, again, that partial derivative, 10 sine squared theta cosine phi times a unit vector in the r direction plus 1 over r times this derivative. So the r's will cancel, and I'm left with plus 20 sine of theta, cosine of theta, cosine phi, right? And then I've got 1 over r sine theta times this partial derivative. So the r's cancel, and one of the sine thetas cancel. So I'm left with, um, I'm left with minus 10 sine theta, sine phi in the phi direction. Okay, so I think that looks good, and uh, I guess I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just emphasize that that's the answer by putting a box around it. That's the answer to part C, and I think that's finished then.